Sham Singh Atari, was born in 1790s in town of Atari. At his early he was educated in Gurmukhi and Persian. When Ramjit Singh became king of Punjab he got himself at his disposal. King Ramjit Singh knowing his qualities and fighting abilities made him a jathadar of 5,000 horsemen. He participated actively in many campaigns, notably like the Campaign of Multan, Campaign of Kashmir, Campaign of the Frontier Province. For a brief period of three years he was made governor of Kashmir by King Ranjit Singh. Later, King Ranjit Singh recalled him to Lahore. Since he was trusted aid of King Ranjit Singh, King feared treacherous Tagras. It is said that Sham Singh Atari and King Ranjit Singh were good friends. Sham Singh Atari could be called truly, one of the unofficial ministers of King Ranjit Singh's court. Later, he educated himself to read and write English. Lord William Bentick's meeting with King Ranjit Singh at Ropar, on the bank of the side ledge. In the spring of 1831 October 15 was an occasion of impressive ceremony and display. Both sides met on the either side of Sadlaj with their full forces. Sham Singh Atarawila was in the forefront everywhere. Karak Singh was declared the heir apparent of King Ranjit Singh. Karak Singh's son known Ihul Singh was 16 years old in 1837 when Sham Singh Atarawila proposed the marriage of his daughter to known Ihul Singh grandson of King Ranjit Singh. Maharaja agreed. Marriage was held at Amritsar in the month of April. It was a gala event. Almost all the rulers of India were invited as well as those of Kabul, Iran, etc. The two days of festive and merriment is still remembered by the people of Amritsar and Lahore. In honor of Nonihul Singh's wedding. King Ranjit Singh started an order of merit which was known as Kakabayak Balai Punjab, Star of the Prosperity of Punjab. But, all was not well. King Ranjit Singh died in June 1839. The powerful Dagras from Jammu, Gulab Singh, Dayan Singh and Suchat Singh played a subtle role and put into motion the chain of proceedings which brought about the demolition of Sikh power. At the time of Sikh ruler's death, Dayan Singh was Prime Minister of Punjab to Karak Singh, son of Ranjit Singh. Gulab Singh and Suchat Singh also held offices under Dayan Singh Dagra. They were not content with this. They had their eyes on the throne itself and the main object of their grand strategy was to crown Dayan Singh's son, Hira Singh, King of the Punjab. One night, Suchat Singh led his men into King Karak Singh's chamber and killed his trusted aide and tutor. Chet Singh Bajwa. Karak Singh was removed from the fort and remained virtually prisoner in the hands of Dayan Singh. Sham Singh Atarawila and other good officers were sent to far places like Kashmir, northwest frontier provinces, just like No Nihul Singh. No Nihul Singh knew about the treacherous Stagras. He did not come to Lahore until the day his father Karak Singh died due to slow poisoning by Dogra brothers. On the same day of his father's cremation, a huge concrete piece fell on No Nihul Singh and he also died. It is said that this conspiracy was hatched by Dogra brothers. English doctor of Lahore which operated on Prince, later reported that Prince was alive and well after injury but mysteriously next day his skull was found crushed. Dian Singh then openly suggested Queen Chand Kaur to adopt his son and declare him Maharaja of Punjab. She refused and was put in house arrest. She was also killed by the maid servants. Gulab Singh carried away all the money and valuables belonging to Maharani. Then the next king other son of Ranjit Singh, King Shur Singh was put to death by the Sanda alias Ardvars. They were together with Dogra brothers. English saw the opportunity and they attacked. Sham Singh Atarawila, who was more of a soldier than a politician, got the troops together. But he was not assigned the general, rather a small number of horsemen was put under his command. Generals like Lal Singh and Tej Singh led the Khalsa forces. They did not attack British at Ludhiana but waited until their reinforcement arrived from Delhi. On December 13, 1845 Governor-General Lord Harding issued a proclamation, 
announcing war on the Sikhs. Lao Singh, the Prime Minister of Sikhs was in treasonable communication with Captain Peter Nicholson, the assistant political agent. He advised Lao Singh to not to attack Frizapur, Sikhs could have won it easily. Sikhs came into contact with British on December 18, 1845 at Mudgee. A battle took place. Lao Singh who headed the Sikh attack, deserted his army and precipitately fled the field when Sikhs stood firm in their order fighting in a resolute and determined manner. The commander's action disturbed the ranks and Sikhs retired with the loss of 17 guns. British suffered heavy casualties of 872 dead. Among the dead was General Robert Sale, the defender of Jalalabad. Sham Singh Atarawila did not took part in this action he was deployed at another point. The Second Battle of Mudki was fought and it seemed that Sikhs had won it easily. Here is what the British Commander-in-Chief acknowledged we were in critical and perilous stage. But Lao Singh and Tej Singh came again to the rescue of the English. They both deserted the Khalsa army. Sikh soldiery without their leaders was stood waiting for orders and lost the battle once ammunition was done. In this battle British lost 1,000 men 1721 were wounded, Sikhs lost about 2,000 men and about 73 pieces of guns. Sikh sarders were alarmed. A Sikh sarder named Ranjad Singh Majithia crossed the Satluj in full force along with another sarder named Ajit Singh Ledwa. They marched to Ludhiana and burned down the British cantonment. Sir Henry Smith who was sent to intercept them was defeated at Badoel on January 11. Then the last battle of the anglo Sikh wars was fought at Sabharan. It was do or die for the Sikh sarders like Ranjad Singh, Ajit Singh and Sham Singh Atarawila. Sham Singh Atarawila who was about 60 years of age vowed before Gur Granth Sahib to fight unto the last in battle rather than retire in defeat. But, Lal Singh and Tej Singh had already given British their positions of guns. Etc. Gulab Singh Dagra stopped sending rations from Lahore. Tej Singh fled on the very first day of the action. Sham Singh and Ranjad Singh led the forces. Sham Singh Atarawila clad in white silks and riding a white steed, the grey-bearded hero went onto the field of action, pledged to victory or death. He rallied the ranks depleted by traitorous desertions. His courage inspired the Sikhs to make a determined bid to save the day, but the odds were against them. Sham Singh fell fighting in the foremost ranks. So did his dauntless comrades. Cunningham who was present as an additional aide-de-camp to the Governor-General, describes the last scenes of battle vividly in his book History of the Sikhs. Although assailed on neither side by squadrons of horse and battalions of foot, no Sikh offered to submit and no disciple of Guru Gobind Singh asked for quarter. They everywhere shone a front to the victors, and stalked slowly and sullenly away while many rushed singly forth to meet a sure death by contending with the multitude. The victors looked with stolid wonderment upon the indomitable courage of the vanquished.